going to elaborate processions of Buddhist lens candles, massive wax sculptures, and remarkable traditional performances. Thailand's Candle Festival is one of the most eye-catching events in the kingdom. The festival is celebrated nationwide, but the northeastern province of Ubon Ratchathani has long played host to the grandest of the festivities, holding the longest procession in the country, numerous temple fairs, light and sound displays, and crowds numbering over a million each year. The province's annual candle festival started in 1977, though the smaller scale lens candle processions existed long before that. Tung Si Mueang, or the city's plaza, is where most of the action is likely to take place. This area gets very busy as almost 500 street stalls claim their space even though the processions themselves aren't carried out until a few days later. One on Asan Habusha night and the other on the following morning, which is the beginning of the Buddhist Lent. It is almost 5 o'clock in the evening of Asan Habusha, when some of the candle and wax sculpture flows are marched to Tungsi Meung. We weave our way through the crowd, waiting excitedly for those floats to arrive. Everyone is here for the same reasons, to get a close-up look and snapshots of the floats that are the nominees of this year's competition for best craftsmanship. Right now, we are standing at Tung Si Meung, the main venue for the Candle Festival 2013. These wax sculptures are being marched now onto the road and soon they'll be graded by the judges. The competition involves two types of floats based on the method of decoration. Wax carved sculptures and those employing molded beeswax pieces. Each type is categorized according to the size of the floats. Large, medium and small. New to the competition this year and much waited for is the float of aromatic wax sculptures, the masterpiece by Det Udom, the local community famous for its aromatic candle artistry. Just imagine how much hard work and labor you have to put into this. The amazing thing about this one is that it's actually aromatic. And it smells really nice. Night falls as does a drizzly rain, which is very common during Buddhist Lent, as it takes place during the rainy season. Despite the rain, stalls are busy with visitors, and grandstands are quickly filled up by spectators guarding the best spots to watch the procession, which is due to begin in a few hours. The night procession is a short one and opens with the performance of the Light and Sound Show, retelling the Ubon Rajatani people's way of life, followed by the last year's champion wax and candle floats. The show are impressive and add excitement and context to the perfect glow of the spotlighted orange wax sculptures against the blacked-out sky. But while the crowd enjoys the festivities, one group of people has to deal with a very heavy task. A notebook in hand, Atiwat Chandrawijit, one of the ten float judges, circles around this cough float more than three times, looking, noting, and thinking hard. The job isn't easy. <laughs> The sculptures must be in perfect proportion and symmetry. The design, creativity, and details in the finished work all count. The judges can be architects, art professors, or candle sculptor specialists. This is my fourth time being a judge, and it's still a difficult decision as to who is to win. <laughs> On the next morning, 
the crowd gathers on the grandstands of Chung Si Meng's main road again. This time, to witness the full-length portion of the procession, which marks the official start of the candle festival. Heading the procession is a cart carrying the lens candle bestowed to Obon Rajatani by His Majesty the King. And then, what will be a one kilometer long procession begins. Each float is preceded by traditional performances, whether it is dances or local Molam bands, all of which represented Ubon Rajatani's core cultures and ways of life. The sculptures themselves depict different Buddhist subjects, some are Buddha's life and stories of his former incarnations, and others are morality tales. Sibadu's temple float is probably the most eye-catching of all, with these groups of sculptures picturing a scene from hell. Moving at an extremely slow speed, the last float arrives at around 3 in the afternoon. But it never lost its crowd of supporters, despite the scorching sun or the rain. While the speakers are pumping music accompanying each float on the main road, Within the wall of Si Ubon Ratanaram Temple, another significant ceremony takes place. The royal lens candle is now being honored and will be placed in the temple's hall. On the following day, when the festivity dies down, the traffic around Chung Si Meng has eased as the roads reopen for vehicles, and the backwater atmosphere of Ubon Rajatani's downtown resumes, where all the nominated floats were exhibited. Now, only the winners remain. After a night of deliberation, the result is Wat Mahawanaram as the winner. So, thumbs up for the champion. These sculptures will be exhibited here for a few days before they're brought back to the temples where they belong.